Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Championship Check-In Podcast. We are back. And look who's back. Swanning it around the south of France. The only thing you're allowed to do in the south of France. Sam Parkin, are you back? Are you tanned? Are you refreshed? Are you ready for the running? I, I did think I was a little bit sun-kissed, actually. Uh, probably <laughs> mm, back end of last week. Yeah, yeah, I did get a little bit. But um, yeah, it was nice just catching up with my dad down there. I spent a bit of time with my brother, who was visiting as well. No football really in the evening, so plenty of time for, for red wine and fromage, <laughs> which was uh, devoured, as you can imagine. Sam Parkin enjoying his retirement after hundreds and hundreds of games as a professional yeah, for, for many a year, for many a year, I, I wondered why my dad had moved so far from Queen's Park Rangers, but now I, f- I fully understand his decision. Unbelievable. Making. Unbelievable scenes. And you might have heard Sam on CoComs on Mansfield Coventry on Sky Sports at the weekend, Sam. Tremendous stuff. Yeah, that was good fun. We had a horizontal rain coming in, into the gantry, so... Um, my paper notes weren't much good, so I had to rely on what was in my my brain, which I'd uh, I'd done quite a lot of prep when I was away. Actually, we had a nice apartment, um, so I did a bit of prep with the the med in the in the shot. Um, but now it was great, yeah, yeah. With with Daniel Mann for the first time, who the championship viewers aficionados will will know his voice from his sterling work on a championship over the last decade or or two. First time I'd worked with him, brilliant. Yeah, really good experience and, um, yeah, got quite a good game. Colchester getting a bit of an unlikely point, but, yeah, I was chuffed to do it and really enjoyed it. And we are very, very lucky to have Sam here on this channel, but I'm going to be putting him on the spot in the next sort of 10, 15 minutes. Sam, I have done my end of season 1-24. to I've predicted the entire table, so I'll be able to give you mine, but we're going to go a slightly different format today. We are going to get Parkins picks for the top four, for five to eight, and we're going to get his relegation three as well. That's going to be the format. And then we will have a look at a couple of mouth-watering matchups. And it's getting a bit twitchy for me in the predictions. We're about to record the entire Easter weekend of predictions. I wonder whether Sam will have caught me by then. Let's get into it and head to Parkins picks. Right. Since you've been away, one thing has changed. Uh, well, we've had an Ipswich fixture moved to midweek in the last, um, between round 45 and 46, because Coventry um, obviously got to the cup semi final. We've had Leicester breaching FFP. And you can tell me from a player's point of view whether that will make utterly no difference to their mentality. They are under an embargo in terms of new signings and contracts now. But we know what we knew when we left, when you headed off for sunny um, south of France with um, Leeds at the top, uh, just made that overtake. Leicester in second. Um, why don't I actually, why don't I just bring the table up so everyone can see it? Leeds at the top on 82. Leicester in second, one goal behind, but with a game in hand. Ipswich in third. Southampton, eight points back from Ipswich, but remember... They have two games in hand on Leeds and Ipswich and they have away trips to the entire top four. Um, for anybody who's seen my 1-24, to Sam, I've got nothing moving. So I've got Southampton in fourth. We've just too much to do. I think they're going to stay there. I've got Leeds winning it. I think the momentum's going to stay with them. I think it's going to be so close between Leicester and Ipswich that I think it'll go down to the last day and a very small amount of points. But I just feel, at this juncture, Sam, a game in hand, the goal difference, and the extra point is enough of an advantage in a tight race for Leicester City. Uh, do you want to take me through from um, the table as it is at the moment, Southampton, uh, Ipswich, Leicester, and um, Leeds? How do you see it ending up? This is going to make for a really boring podcast, isn't it, if I agree with you? But I'm afraid uh, I'm going to have You've to. You've got to say it how you feel it, Sam. Yeah, yeah I'm going to have to agree with you. I, th- I think Southampton, yeah, I think there's something in that that run just coming a little bit too early, maybe, or taking something out of them when they when they stumbled, obviously, uh, at, the, at the end of that incredible winning run. So 
and the, the the prospect of having to face the the top three, I think, over the last few weeks is just such a such a monumental challenge in front of them. Um, if they were to achieve it, it would oh. just be you know story for the ages, wouldn't it? So I think for those reasons, I can't see them moving, and that would of course inevitably you would imagine set up a a game against West Bromwich Albion. So there's there's no favourite there, I wouldn't say, over two games, if that is to be the, the playoffs. Sorry for jumping ahead. but So that's how I see them finishing. So I think can I just finished... ask one question? If Daniel Farker was in the dugout at Southampton with two titles, how would, would you be feeling a bit differently about them being able to plough through and get mm. this incredible run that they'd need to um, no, make it right through? I don't think so. No, I don't, I don't think so. I think it's probably greater than who's in the in the dugout. Um, obviously, come on to Daniel Farker in a minute uh, in slightly, you know, different situation. But no, I don't think that that matters really. I think Russell Martin has shown himself to be really capable. You know, this jump to a, a club with the resources, with better players, with bigger egos. I think they were all the questions that were rightly kind of asked of him start of this season and. Um, after such an incredibly difficult end to the summer and and autumn, early autumn, you know they've turned into a a great side this season. Really enjoyed watching them, and and they're going to go close still. But obviously they're going to have to do it in in my mind through the through the playoffs. And yeah, taking me on to Ipswich, I think you know the conversation that we were having now could have been diff- could have been different had they held on to to win the points at, at Cardiff. And I don't think that, you know, derails them completely or, you know, finishes their chances. I think it's just you know, circumstantially they're, they're, they're three points worse off. And for the reasons that you stated, the the goal, the goals for column um, and just the, the, the quality of the two other sides, I just think it's going to be really difficult to, to stay with those two now that the prize is right there on the horizon. Um, I just think that Leicester will get their act together and Leeds fully have their act together at the moment. Can I just bring you on to Leicester now and we'll just try and play devil's advocate because I'm seriously a Rizzler paper. You know, I could completely change mm. my mind after Easter if Leicester have had a bad Easter yeah. and it's about a good Easter. <laughs> Just look at those Leicester fixtures coming up. Mm. You've got to go to Bristol City and you're all, you're going first on... There's going to be some brilliant days, Sam, where we could have the lead changing, you know, mm. four times during the day because of the staggered kickoffs on Sky. I'm just looking at the next three. Well, actually, just generally, you can make an argument there. I know Ipswich have got to play Southampton. They've got the local derby against Norwich. They've got to go to Hull and Coventry. But just that run of Norwich, who are in fine form... Birmingham now will happily leave there with a nil-nil draw and 25% possession being Gary Routes returned. And Millwall away, you just don't know, do you? Trip down to Plymouth and then you've got West Brom and Southampton as well. So I, even though I feel it's going to be tight and I feel Leicester will make it, it's still hard work April for Leicester, isn't it? It is, although... I think their tougher run of games comes later in the season. I think that that week or whatever it is in late April, West Bromwich Albion, Southampton, Preston. I think that's the the Mm. trickiest spell for them. However, I think the next three games, I'm not going to say season defining, but I think the next three games for Ipswich Town determines what happens uh, amongst the top three. So we're talking Blackburn away, which I think is a really tough away game. Probably I will state the reasons why a little bit later in today's podcast. And then, of course, Southampton and then Norwich in the derby. So if Ipswich get through those three games with a really good points return, I think we'll know so much more about what their challenge is going to be ultimately the tail end of the season. So I think Leicester, the fixtures are okay now. And I think it will be dependent on how motivated Bristol City are. I think to play for Liam Manning, who needs a bit of a a result in in that game and then maybe yeah Norwich is a tough game we know Norwich are going brilliantly maybe that Millwall game actually is probably the trickiest maybe of the four actually going there you know when it's one of the bigger sides with the bigger followings in the division the Millwall fans and the Millwall team invariably turn up so that would be the one maybe where 
um, they'll have to keep their composure and hope that their quality can shine through. But uh, I just, you know, I've... I've had the benefit of seeing Leeds and Leicester recently, albeit against Chelsea, you know, in the in the flesh. And I probably did walk away from that second game against Leicester, even though Chelsea required two last minute goals or whatever it was to get through. I still left thinking, oh, there is one or two problems there. There is one or two deficiencies. Um, and, and for that reason, if I can, I'm not going to tease it. For that reason, I think Leeds will probably win the title now. That's my Before hunt. we get to Leeds, can I just take you back to Ipswich? Um, and just can I get your players' take on... We've got this artificial break now for Ipswich, whereby they were due to play um, Saturday, 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 and then... Oh, the last one's on Saturday as well, uh, through the last few games of the season. And now... So they play um, your difficult three... And then that uh, parlays into a three-game week to the 13th of April. Then, with the Coventry game gone, Ipswich then have 14 days between the 13th of April and the uh, 27th and end the season with a three-game week, Hull, Coventry, Huddersfield. I know you players always tell me, man, I just want to keep going, keep going, mm. rhythm, rhythm, rhythm. But what is that going to be like if it's in Ipswich's hands and they know that banging out nine points in that last week will get them get them promotion whilst they watch everybody else go. And remember, Leicester play Southampton in that mm. in that time as well. What can you give me your players' take on that? Mm. I think every player's different. Um I, I would see that as a huge benefit. I, I would I would suggest having an opportunity to rest up, possibly um go away, maybe. I don't know. They've probably had the opportunity over the last fortnight or whatever to have a little bit of time away from it but I just think you could do something pretty unique with that couldn't you if it's in their hands or if they've got the opportunity to get promoted over those last three games Kieran McKenna could think outside the box and 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 approach it whichever way he likes um approach it a little bit like a playoff campaign maybe where you could get the players away from the training ground refresh however you want to go about it so so yeah, that's that's a really interesting facet to it. As is that Leicester game against Southampton. Is that is that their game in hand in essence? Um, that's Leicester's game in hand. Yeah. Um, at Southampton, remember, got two, haven't they? They've got to play Preston mm. um, as well. Yeah. So that's that's interesting for for Leicester. Uh, should it come to that? But yeah, um, like I said, I think the next three games will know so much more about probably how many teams are going to be taking this. Uh, this automatic promotion race down to the wire. So just give me your feelings then on Leeds, because this is mm. a um this is new for you. You've kind of backed Leicester um for the most part, which to be fair, yeah. most of us most of us have, haven't we? Mm. Um and is it just the fact that Leeds have seemingly done the hard running at the vital mm. time with 12 wins in 13? They look so settled, stable yeah. and consistent now. And they got all they got all the hard away games out of the way in the first half of the season, which you mentioned back in November, didn't you? Yeah, well, I think, you know, if you, you gave me five minutes now to go and scribble flaws in Leicester's makeup, problems that have arose over the last month and do the same for Leeds United, I'd probably have a full page with Leicester and I'd have very little on the, on the Leeds Great page. Point. Great and point. And plus, yeah. like, I think, you know, Leeds have got so many players that are in form. You know, they've got... They've got 11 players that are in form, you could argue. You know, forward players, uh, abundantly, you know, confident, scoring goals. And, you know, defensively, they're incredible as well. Is it three goals conceded since the, the start of this run? One from, and from open play. And I think they've all been from set plays as well. It's something yeah. like that. Or, or maybe Will only Keane one got, from... Yeah, Will Keane got that scrappy one, didn't he, when Preston scored first minute? I think it ricocheted around, but I don't think it was from a dead ball. But certainly the... Um, the Huddersfield one was and the Faust one for, for Leicester was. So they're conceding nothing. Their their players are banging form. Um, and yeah, Daniel Farker, maybe, just maybe, does come into play right now. And, yes, does, yeah. and also maybe the other point is it doesn't matter how you doesn't matter how you get up, but uh I just think with that with that support and with the the feeling around the place, if it did go down to the last game, you know, to secure the title. I'd fancy them at home to Southampton. And I know that they've shown frailties in, in big games when they've, you know, nearly been over the line before. And that's what the, the the stick that people hit 
the lead supporters with or whatever, yeah. uh, give them the jibes. I, I think they'd get it done if that was the the type of scenario that that played out. And and maybe even you know what I mean, maybe even Leicester might be up as well by then, and it'll be a kind of shootout final day for the title or whatever. Wow. Um, in the comments, please, everybody. Remember, as I always say, you have no credibility in this debate unless you write down in the comments one, two, three, four. Give us your four down there. How do you see that? Top let four me let me just say though, we, for for Leicester, you know, because I didn't really give you any uh, reason as to why they're going to turn their form around. I, I I do think like having Ricardo out, having Indeedy out, having you know. Uh, the ability now to pick Vardy probably if he returns and and Daka and I don't know where they are with Nacho he's obviously not featured too much but I just think you know circumstantially um, they've they've faced quite a lot of problems in the, in the last few weeks so listen they're still a really good team uh, really well coached and they've got loads of good players so I think when the um, push comes to shove they, they'll get their act together and I think those aforementioned players will be a, a big reason for that. So playoffs then, Sam, and we've already essentially both picked our third and fourth place pick. We've both got Ipswich and Southampton. Um, most of the world have had West Brom finishing fifth for about three months already. So it'd be no surprise to you that I've got West Brom fifth. I'll just read up from eighth. Um, calm down, Hull fans. It doesn't mean I hate your club. I had some very babyish comments on my video. I've got Hull in eighth. And just to those Hull fans that wanted to scream and shout at me, if Hull finish sixth and get in the playoffs, I'll be really happy for them. I have nothing against them. And whoever finished sixth, well done. I've got Coventry in seventh, Sam, just on the basis of the chaos with the FA Cup final that they're just going to be playing, other than Southampton, they're going to be playing more football than anybody. So I have Norwich City in sixth position in a playoff semi-final against Ipswich. Mm. And I have West Brom in fifth in a playoff semi-final. Against mm. Southampton. <laughs> Where do you want me to start? Uh, maybe Coventry and uh, Coventry Hull Norwich. That's that. That yeah. to me is that. I know a lot of Preston fans got pissed off with me for saying, "Oh, mm. what about what about Preston?" I'm just giving my mm. opinion that I think those three are the are the best suited. And again, if whoever finishes sixth, I'll give a standard ovation and say congratulations to. You. I don't hate your clubs, mm. everybody. Um, stop being so flaky in the comments. Anyway, rant over, Sam. Um. I think I've been nice enough about Coventry City over the the years to to upset them today. So I'm going to put them eighth. I'm going to put them eighth, and that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to put them eighth, just purely. I think it'll be. Uh, I've got a you know quite clear idea of who my sixth position is going to be. I don't really know seventh and eighth. Um, I think Hull's games are better. I think that the potential to have the lap coming back to. Kind of be that focal point, you know, be a, a proper striker, which I think they've lacked. game against each other, Sam, as well. I think four, yeah. four before the end of the season, they play each other, Hull and Coventry. Yeah, I'm purely basing this on the backlog, the backlog for Coventry. Um, the uh, I think they played the top three, I'm right in saying, or three of the top, top four. So they've got tricky games. Um, and whether, you know, physically it plays a big part, um, you can put that to one side because I think emotionally playing an FA Cup semi-final plays a big part. Um, and there's no getting away from it now. They're going to have microphones shoved in their grids for two weeks, three weeks um, before and after that game, all the stories, all the emotion that goes with it. Um, and listen, these experienced boys that have all played at Wembley, or a large chunk of them. Um, I say a large chunk. I think there's only two starters or something remain at, at Coventry from that, really? that playoff final. I think I read something like that. Yeah, maybe Sheaf and, and Bidwell, maybe, or two players that played in the last game. You, you catch my drift. It's a much-changed yeah. team. Um, and I don't want to say it's a transitional season because they're flying at the moment, but I think they'll be, they'll be well set to have a great crack at promotion next year, especially with the way that that had you right and and Ellis Sims are going right now. And they could still be difference makers. You know, what I say here is probably going to have zero bearing on what happens um, in reality. But for the purposes of this and where we are right now, I'll have Coventry in eighth and I will have Hull City in seventh. Um, I think the home form is probably ultimately going to cost Hull. Obviously, four recent draws as well. Um, on the spin and I think 
you know, the bigger picture will probably be, um, yeah, maybe that that lack of a an out and out striker as well as another ingredient. Had they had the lap a another over the last month, maybe some of those points would have been turned into into Once maximum threes, yeah. return. So um, yeah, so I, I'll just go for them to finish above Coventry because the better games, I think, as well, the better games um, ahead. One thing I did want to flag part of my reasoning for for Norwich to be um, in my sixth position. Hull have not been anyone by a greater margin than one goal since the 16th of December. And people will say, oh, it's good game management and they're winning the tight games and they're they're, they're defensively superb. In that time, Norwich have beaten teams by more than one goal on six occasions, Coventry on five occasions. And I just think that kind of leads me into just say where Norwich are right now with that full complement maybe of attacking players minus Jonathan Rowe available. I think he we've might been be talking... back for the for the yeah. playoffs. I know we're talking about regular season. We could have been talking about Norwich having what, I don't know, 10 more points than where they are now. I don't I don't know. But you know, had they had Sargent and Barnes and uh, and Rowe, you know, whenever I've seen them this year and they've looked a little bit off it, it's because they've had lack of numbers. And when you look at that bench still now for Norwich, I think another couple of injuries, well, a couple of injuries again to important players, that could really hinder their chances, I, th- I think. But at the moment, with their better players available, you look at the goals for, I think there's a bit to make up there as well. Certainly they're... They're a lot superior than than Hull in that department. I think it's a bit closer between them and Coventry. But um, if it was to come down to that, um, you know, they've got some making up to do. So for that reason, Sargent, the the emergence of science really in the last few weeks, um, the team looks good all of a sudden. And probably that old cliche of some some really good experienced guys that have been in this position before. Sam, Norwich get a sniff of promotion. You know what happens, don't you? Mm. Yeah. And I think it does play in, you know, like a game away from home, three or four games to to play when you've got Barnes and Kenny McLean, people like that around the, around the, uh, the dressing room. These guys aren't going to be phased by it going down to the wire. So I think they'll, They'll probably have enough to, to finish sixth, is my my decision this morning. So we agree, three, four, five, six. Sam and I disagree. We've got Hull and Coventry. Just in. done it for just done it for giggles, mate. Just done it for giggles <laughs> this morning. Um, you're gonna have some tearful Preston fans, but um my my take is just a bit short squad wise compared to the other teams they're up against, and he's done a he's done a good job. Yeah, I think it's been like it's been like that, hasn't it? Sorry, I'm not in the boat. It's been so up and down this season. I think there's, you know, even the most ardent of um, press and North End supporters who go every week would have had periods where they've been probably thinking it's about time for a change. Um, I think Ryan Lowe's faced loads of criticism, you know, despite having that unbelievable start to the season. So just showed you how badly the performance is tailed off. So to, to get back going and have a, a shout still, I think is remarkable. But yeah, I, I don't think they've got the quality, ultimately, um, probably to, to match Norwich. Um, and obviously, they're coming from slightly deeper than the other two teams at the moment. I agree. Did play each, Norwich have to go to Preston? So, we will come on here if Preston turn mm. Norwich over and, you know, oh, win yeah, that yeah. six-pointer. Yeah, this, is, this is the thing. Don't get... <laughs> Don't get too fragile in the comments. We will react every single week to what happens. We're just telling you how we see it right now. Okay. Relegation, Sam. And I said on my um, 1 to 24, let's be honest, my two-year-old, Enid, could take the bits of paper with the team names on them and have as much chance of predicting this Mm -hmm. as, um, as I have here. So... Other than Rotherham, which is blindingly obvious to anyone, um, Rotherham will finish bottom and may well be relegated within the next few games. I have got I got Huddersfield going down because I've found them up and at them and aggressive, but I'm not sure it's translated to results. And I've had a bit of fun with this one, a bit of a gamble. Not fun for the Blackburn fans, Sam, but... And I know you're great mates with John Eustace, so I know I'm putting you on the spot here. I've, I've got Blackburn in 22nd. 
I know they've got 42 points. I don't like their fixtures. And um, if Smodic were to not score or go down, I would really fear for them. Uh, so just to round it out, I've got Wednesday, then Plymouth, then Birmingham, QPR. I've got Stoke like winning back-to-back -back games at some point. And then I've got Millwall at home. Mm. So anyway, you don't have to do the whole eight. Mm. Um, good luck. I've got Rotherham 24, Huddersfield 23, Blackburn 22. I did get a lot of blowback for Blackburn. That is a bit of an out outlandish pick, to be honest. Mm. I'm still deciding now, mate. Is my, Brilliant. You know, Off the I'll cup. give you the, Here we go. Breaking I'll news. Give you, I'll give you my four. So I'll give you my four that are going to be fighting out. I need, I need three in five minutes time, yeah? Yeah, well, I'm going to give you my two to join Rotherham. Um, yeah, Rotherham, my lab, 24th. So my four that I'm just wrestling with are in no particular order. I'll uh, increase the tension. <laughs> um, Sheffield Wednesday, Plymouth Argyle, Birmingham, and Huddersfield are the four that I've been wrestling with all morning. Well, this and is I think great because just... we're definitely going to disagree because you've got Blackburn surviving then. You've got Stoke surviving, yeah. Millwall, um, and QPI, yeah? Well, let me deal with Blackburn first. I, I just think that um, there's going to be so many tight games. And, oh, my God, that was an understatement from you there. The, fix, the fixtures are horrendous. So I'll get that out first. The fixtures, you know, and I don't want to put too much on that because it's the championship and you end up looking like a fool trying to predict like we do every week. But with Blackburn, I, I just think that they'll be so tight there'll be low margin games and they don't need more than that one goal to take points i think other teams probably have to maybe score a few more they only need one goal from smodix and 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 that will probably yield three points somewhere along the way and i think they probably need seven points give or take somewhere around that um and i think they'll get them um so that's my reason behind that um they've had a couple of clean sheets i think in nine games but conceded nine in those nine uh, last league games under John Eustace and just just the what the one win, but I think they'll win some tight games. That's my that's my hunch. Right, I'm going to go in 23rd, and I've literally decided my two other relegated sides in the last minute or two. Um, I'm going to go for Sheffield Wednesday to remain where they are. No way, um, you've been so high on Danny Roll. Yeah, yeah I mean. Yeah, there was three teams in this. I've kind of discounted Birmingham this morning. The more I've looked at it, I don't know how Gary Rowett is going to is going to set them up. Well, I can anticipate yes, that. <laughs> yeah, I, I just mean like he, they still need to try and score, don't they? I know True, what he's yeah. going to probably do defensively. Whether he's got the centre halves, um, they certainly haven't in the last few weeks to go to the back three, back five, or whatever, and still carry a little bit of a. An attacking threat. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, Sheffield Wednesday, and this isn't this isn't on the back of the the thumping at Ipswich or the defeat against Leeds, where I think for a half they were pretty good. Um, I just think, similarly to Southampton, they've had that really really good run, um, and they've been hit by some injuries, and that's all I can base it on. Really, I think Bannon's struggling. I think Pervader, who's been a bit of a revelation as well, and I just think that yeah the ability to to keep going to keep going maybe when you're down on numbers to a degree in the really pressure games off the back of those two defeats um you know and I'm, I'm basing this basically on on what i could see huddersfield doing huddersfield stayed up last year huddersfield have got i think the ability to defend their box i think they've got the ability to make games tight i think they've got that biggest set piece threat maybe than the other sides they haven't got loads of creative forces but somehow they remained in the division last year and I think that experience may put them in good stead in contrast to Sheffield Wednesday whose players have been used to being at the top of League One last year and then this year they've made a fist of it I just think over the, the course of the whole season the way they started may just um, cost them ultimately. I'm not liking where this is going for our friends in Plymouth Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've done this all wrong, haven't I? Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. And I'm down there in a few weeks as well. I mean, this um, is very Mate, you've got to call it me. how it is. That's why we've got you on here. Well, it's impossible. It's impossible to hold and uh, to call. Um, I just, you know, you speak about chaos, don't you? Um, and I know they've got brilliant owners and they've got brilliant people behind the scenes. And 
I just think to lose your manager, they've had so much, I was going to say good fortune. It's not been good fortune. They've had so many decisions go so well over the last few years, you know, low to Schumacher, seamless, brilliant football, especially at home. I just think you look at the results, you sense the feeling from the supporters down there at the moment. You you, you know there's a reliance on Hardy and, and Whitaker. Can I just quickly Whitt- chime in, Sam? I had them surviving and a lot of Plymouth fans replied saying, Ben, you're more confident than we are. So yeah. that does chime with what the support... They were quite flattered that I had them in 20th. The conflict internally for me is that I quite like their games. Um but I don't want to get, again, bogged into that too much. So I more want to look at that lack of clean sheets, but more the lack of being able to put the ball in the opponent's net. Hardy won in eight appearances. Whitaker won in his last seven. Um, those two are real quality operators, but previously this season they had a Zaz who could hurt you. I think less so in terms of numbers, but but Kundal was a decent squad player as well in an attacking sense so yeah if those two and yeah not to contradict a little bit what I said about Blackburn but I just think that people are doing a bit of a job on those two at the moment certainly kept them quiet the last month or so um and the feeling towards the the manager the negativity is is quite strong so you know I think they could just um I think they could fall oh Carl I really think they could wow there you go. Sam has put his neck on the line. I've put my neck on the line. We need you to do the same. I need 24, 23, 22. You don't even have to put the positions. Just give us your three to drop and give everybody the respect in the comments on this one that it is impossible to call this other than Rotherham. So Sam has gone Rotherham, Wednesday and Plymouth. So two teams that Sam studied in League One last season, dropping back down. I have gone Rotherham, Huddersfield and Blackburn. And again, we will say we don't want any of your teams to get relegated. But guys, listen to this. This is a fact. Three of your teams are going to get relegated. It is definitely, definitely going to happen. So uh, get involved down there in the comments. And we are going to move you on to our double mouthwatering matchup. Just quickly, Sam, I would always love picking your brains as a player. How fun is this Easter weekend going Friday, mm. Monday, and all the games have got so much context riding on them? It wasn't fun towards the tail end of my career, mate, when your legs are only just coming back on the Monday morning and you've got just to go out the, there again. Your tiredness, yeah? Yeah. I always yeah. used to find the 28th of a nightmare as well, 28th of December. You know, you play <laughs> Boxing Day and you think, oh, looked after myself. Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, you get out there on Boxing Day and it's quite nice to get that that, that game done. And then inevitably you have a few mince pies and have a glass of wine on the, the Boxing Day evening and you're back out there on the 28th. Professionalism is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's tough. It's tough on the legs. I mean, as a, you know, as a fan, like thinking back, I used to love these two days and, you know, they can obviously impact the the outcome of season's hugely. So, yeah, it's massive, massive for for everyone. But I, I would presume the majority of managers will look at it as an opportunity to... You've got box clever, haven't you? Even Leeds, Leicester, Ipswich. Well, as in batching the, batching the two games up? Yeah, well, I mean, a bit two, two or three changes. You know, even if... You know, the, the best case scenario is that Ipswich are... You know, where, where are they? They're Blackburn, aren't they? They're 3-0 up with half an hour to go and Kieran McKenna can get... To have, uh, and, yeah. won the game off out of the way yeah, that's yeah. you know that'll be the thought process but yeah they're got, gonna have to box incredibly clever um but yeah it's a great weekend great weekend the thing i love about it sam apart from that the sun is the sun is out now and we're almost yeah. playing springtime football there's no dead rubbers yet at this point is there literally every game you know has or the majority of games have something mm. riding on them so sam I've picked out two. I've gone for two head-to-heads, and we'll just get your brief thoughts, and if you want to call out any other games. So on uh, Good Friday, I've gone for QPR versus Birmingham, both sides outside the bottom three. Both of us have backed them, both sides to stay up, and I think Gary Rowett arriving at Birmingham, everyone's going to have a look on 
that, see how much tighter they are and, you know, see the impact of his return. And then on Easter Monday, I couldn't go for, I know you're an ex-Ipswich player and I'm an Ipswich fan and we often get accused of focusing too much on Ipswich. But come on, we got head-to-heads three times between the top four between now and the end of the season. That is the first, Sam. 5.30, everybody's in the family. You know, maybe the people who've gone to the 3 p.m. games are going to get home and be in front of the box. It's huge. Ipswich versus Southampton. Um, am I right on the mouthwatering matchups there, Sam? Let me just bring you the Good Friday card up. Um, any other ones you want to you want to mention there? If I just scroll you down to the bottom as well, uh, you can see Watford leads out of shot and Ipswich mm. Blackburn, but um, QPR Birmingham. Well, wow. yeah, I suppose Mill West Brom's a good looking game, isn't it? For for well, I suppose West Brom are pretty settled, but. That'd be a really good crowd there. Again, for the reasons I just stated, when they face Leicester in a few weeks as well. Blackburn Ipswich, yeah, same same reason. That's a, that's a pressure game, isn't it, for, for both clubs? But yeah, I, I suppose it's important that I address QPR Birmingham, address QPR more than, than anything else, just because I didn't have them in that relegation conversation. Listen, I'm. this could go to the last day. We could have four or five teams, you know, still... Um, with the the potential outcome being relegation going into the last game of the season. I, I'm not for for any moment today saying QPR are going to be four or five points away from trouble. I just think that I've seen enough from them in, in some of the performances as well, some of the level of confidence um, that, that the manager has been able to, to get into these players. You know, that West Brom game was the last time I saw them in the flesh. That was... You know, not a relegation threatened side by any stretch of the imagination. But since then, they haven't scored. So I think this will be a real tight game against Birmingham. It was nil-nil at St Andrews. I don't think there's going to be loads of chances. I don't think there's probably going to be loads of goals. But I probably believe that QPR might just have a little bit too much for Birmingham in, in this game. And that would give them, I think, a real lift. So I think they'll be disappointed, you know, over the course of the last 10 days, QPR, I think that was a really winnable game at Sunderland. It sounded like it was pretty drab, but it sounded like they were there for the taking to a degree. So this is a this is a big one. And like I said, fascinating how Gary Rowett goes about it. Um, has he got the personnel to make them really hard to play against? Does he want to still, I don't know, encourage those kind of diminutive forward players who have been really goal shy themselves in the last few weeks or does he have a does he have a plan up his sleeve maybe Jukovic is going to come back and save the day for the uh 736th time in his Birmingham career but he's but definitely not going to play 180 minutes across, the, across no. the um just just where you were talking Sam just because I'm a complete pervert for it I've got the last weekend up it's some interesting fixes look Huddersfield go to Ipswich I know crazy things happen on the last day Blackburn go to Leicester on the last day of the season. Mm. So that could be both ends of the table involved. Plymouth are at home. I think you always mm. want to be at home on the last day of the season. Stoke are at home. Um, Birmingham at home to Norwich. QPR mm. go to Coventry. So if it does go down to the last day, oh. nobody has got a nice cushy home game against the mid-table team who's on the beach, Sam. Well, they, QPR at Cov, I went to a few... Premier League relegation battles between those two sides at Highfield right, Road. Yeah. Tense affairs. There you go. I'll go for Ipswich to be nice and secure in third position before that final day and maybe Huddersfield to get something at Portman Road to stay in the division. There Are you, you suggesting you that. that Ipswich might surreptitiously avoid Norwich on the last day of the season by playing the reserves against No, I'm saying Kieran McKenna might be, you know, have the luxury to uh, to rest, rest a few boys, you. rest a few rest bodies maybe. Um in- which yeah, David and, and, Wagner, the current Norwich manager, did incredibly successful with Huddersfield for the last two games before their playoff um, campaign. Just quickly, Sam, because we'll we'll round this out and then because we've got loads mm. of predictions to do. Um, Ipswich Southampton on yeah. Easter Monday. I know we don't know the context, but that should be a superb game, shouldn't it? Should be um, a little bit strange. Reminding myself that Ipswich won by a solitary goal at, at Southampton early on this season, but pretty in keeping with recent times. Hutchinson got the goal, didn't he? And he's he's been massive, hasn't he, for Ipswich the last few weeks? So, and Wes Burns' Instagram would suggest that he's probably not going to be around for the remainder of the season now. Is so, that right? I didn't yeah. know that. 
So they're going to need Hutchison. They're going to need more. They're going to need Al Hamadi. You know, players that have really come in and, and impacted. So I would say goals. I would say plenty of them. Um, I think there's been 19 goals in Southampton's last five away games. <laughs> so if it's in keeping with what normally gets churned out at Portman Road, um, I'd definitely be tuning in for that one. And there's been a little bit of inconsistency with Southampton away from home, but I've no idea which way that will go. But I'll go for a nice share of five goals. I'll tell you in a minute, actually, when we do the predictions. You will, there you go. You will indeed. Um, guys, slightly shorter championship check-in podcast. Obviously, we're in the middle of the international break, but fear not, because there is going to be a prediction show for round 39. That'll be coming out on Wednesday. We're going to get ahead, and we're also going to do round 40. We'll put that out on Saturday in between the two sets of fixtures. And uh, we don't know. what We'll likely be back on the Tuesday after, if not the Wednesday um, after the Easter weekend. We'll also be back with um, Feb's questions the week that was. That'll follow. And there haven't been any championship games for a while. So I'll be even more terrible than I usually am on these sorts of things. Right, um, Sam, last word from you. Uh, enjoy the Easter weekend. Nobody come for me in the comments. Thank you. <laughs> they will. <laughs> <laughs>